welcome everyone to our Tuesday leadership development session tonight. I pray the Lord will reveal himself to everyone without exception in Jesus' name. Amen. Father, we thank you for this hour. Thank you for this time. Thank you for your goodness upon our lives. Thank you for the revelation of your mind, your truth unto everyone. We pray that the revelation of your word tonight will bear fruit in every life in Jesus' name. Amen. Reveal to us what we might have forgotten or what we might not have recognized in the world. And we pray that everything that is said will be to the benefit and the profit of everyone in Jesus' name. Amen. We thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you. We're coming to Psalm 34. In Psalm 34, we're picking up verse 7. Psalm 34, we're looking at verse 7. The angel of the Lord encampeth round about them that fear him and delivereth them. Yeah, it talks about the angel and it talks about the angel of the Lord and then it brings up the people that fear the Lord and the angel of God the angel of the Lord the same thing comes around the people of God individually the people who fear the Lord the people who love the Lord the people who serve the Lord and whatever challenge they may have and in whatever predicament they may find themselves the angel of the Lord encompasses continuously around the people that fear the Lord and he delivers them he delivered in the past is delivering now and he'll keep on delivering you until you see the Lord face to face in Jesus name Tonight we are looking at the ministry of angels to believers today. The ministry of angels to believers today. We are having three points we are looking at. Number one, the character and the power of the angels. We need to understand their character. We need to understand their mode of operation. We need to understand the strength and the power of those angels and the Lord sends the angels to everyone who loves the Lord, everyone in the kingdom of God encamping around them and delivering them the character and the power of the angels. Number two, the confirmation of punishment by the angels when God wants to punish those who are persecuting the people of God and those who are harassing afflicting the people of God or those who are contradicting his will he uses those angels as agents of the punishment as agents that will convey the punishment of the wicked upon the wicked the confirmation of punishment by the angels point number three the commission and protection by the angels as we have the commission the great commission those angels to have a commission the lord had given them and they carry out the commission and the commission is for the protection of the people of God the commission and the protection by the angels let's look at them one by one number one the character and the power of the angels we're coming back to Psalm 34 and we're looking at verse 7 in Psalm 34 verse 7 the angel of the Lord encampeth round about them that fear him and delivereth them 
because many people are not familiar with the ministry of angels and the power the strength of the angels we need to uh, look at some areas number one the description of the holy angels we're talking about the angels that are loyal to god the angels that are obedient to God and the angels that are available and faithful and they're carrying out all the instruction of the Almighty God. They're the holy angels. Number two, the deliverance through the heavenly angels. These angels reside in heaven. They are in the presence of God and then God sends them on errand to go and do in any part of the world where his people are to go and protect them and deliver them the deliverance coming through the heavenly angels number three the dominion of the honored angels those angels that are honored and the lord sends them to go and do a particular thing their power their strength they have dominion and anywhere God sends them, they always prevail. And when God sends them to deliver you and to protect you and to preserve you and to drive away anyone and all the people that will hurt you, they will not go back to God and say, the enemies of that man were too strong. I couldn't overcome. They will overcome and they will bring testimony back to god you sent me to your son you sent me to your daughter i accomplished it he is delivered you are delivered in jesus name number one the description of the holy angels we're coming to psalm 34 verse 7 it says the angel of the lord encamped round about them that fear him that is that fear the lord and delivers them how do you describe those angels and what is their power what is their strength psalm 103 verse 20 in Psalm 103 verse 20, it tells us, it says, Bless the Lord, ye his angels that excel in strength. They excel, they are more powerful, they are greater than any man on earth. No matter how wicked a man is on earth, the angels of God are greater in strength, they are greater in power. And no matter what authority anyone has, and no matter the group of people that person belongs to, when the angel comes, he'll be of super strength, of greater strength, angels that excel in strength, that do his commandments that do his commandments that's a characteristic of those angels when god sends them they do the commandment of the lord hearkening unto the voice of his word they are all ears and whatever the lord says they understand and they carry out without delay and without any reservation they hark him they listen, they obey the voice of his word. In Mark chapter 8, verse 38. Mark chapter 8, verse 38. It talks about the character, the holiness of those angels. Look at this. Mark chapter 8, verse 38. Whosoever therefore shall be ashamed of me or and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation of him also shall the son of man be ashamed this is what i want you to look at when he cometh in the glory of his father with what kind of angels he the holy angels the angels are holy the angels are righteous the angels are obedient to the word of god and then they live forever you cannot kill them no enemy can kill them no human being can kill them in luke chapter 20 verse 36 luke chapter 20 verse 36 it tells us neither can they die 
anymore. It's talking about the children of God uh, who uh, live uh, this world. And it says, neither can they die anymore, for they are equal unto the angel, unto the angels, and are the children of God, being the children of the resurrection. So we learn about the angels they were created by god and they were created for the purpose of being obedient to god and they excel in strength and they are holy and they are righteous and they live on and on and on neither can they die anymore for they are equal unto the angels we'll come to number two now and that is the deliverance we have through the heavenly angels we're coming back to psalm 34 reading from verse 7 again the angel of the lord encompassed round about them that fear him and delivereth them anyone that fears the lord over here tonight i said anyone fearing the lord here tonight the lord will confirm it to your life in jesus name can we read it this way now? The angel of the Lord encampeth around me that fear him. And delivereth me. He will deliver you every time in Jesus' name. You will not die before your time. Psalm 91, we're reading from verse 11. We're looking at the deliverance that comes through those heavenly angels. He shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. You go out, he will keep you. And you come in, the Lord will keep you. Because he has given not just one angel, but his angels over thee. To keep thee in all thy ways. He'll preserve your going out. He'll preserve your coming in in Jesus' name. Verse 12. In verse 12 it says, They shall bear thee. Those are the angels. Those angels shall bear thee up in their hands. Lest thou dash thy foot against a stone. Verse 13. In verse 13, Thou shalt tread upon the lion and adder. And the young lion and the dragon shall not trample on the feet. Amen over there. In verse 14, it says, Because he has set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him. He'll send those angels and they will deliver. I will set him on high because he has known my name. You remember the case of Daniel. He got into trouble because he was righteous, because he was holy. And because all the other people walking with him, walking around him, and they saw that there was no fault in his life. And so they thought, what can we do to get him into trouble? Nobody will get you into trouble. He said, we're not going to find anything except about his God. He cannot miss prayer. And then we're going to, you know the story. Let's come to Daniel now, chapter 6. I will read him from verse 19. Then the king arose very early in the morning. And he went in haste unto the den of lions. They had thrown him into the den of lions in their own way. That he saw those enemies, they thought, wants to throw him there, old man, the lions will eat him up. No lion will eat you up. Okay, I, I need to preach to myself. No lion will eat me up. The Lord will preserve you in Jesus' name. Look at verse 20. In verse 20, it tells us, uh, it says, And when he came to the den, the den of lions, he cried with a lamentable voice unto Daniel, and the king spake and said to Daniel, O Daniel, servant of the living God, it was recognized that the servant of the living God is thy God 
whom thou servest continually able to deliver thee from the lions that's the word again to deliver he will deliver in verse 21 in verse 21 then daniel said then said daniel unto the king O king live forever verse 22 it says my god somebody shout my god god is your god in trouble he'll still be your god in the lion's den he'll be your god in your place of work he'll be your god when enemies hover around and they're thirsty for your blood he will still be your god my god has sent tell me his angel and has shot the lion's mouth that they have no they, they have no hurt they have not hurt me for as much as before him innocency was found in me and also before thee O king have I done no hurt verse 23 it says then was the king exceeding glad for him and commanded that they should take Daniel up out of the den so Daniel was taken up out of the den and no manner of hurt was found upon him and no manner of hurt will be found upon you your bones preserved your flesh preserved your life preserved your destiny preserved the lord watching over you as he did for daniel is no respect our business it will do for you in jesus name and no manner of, of hurt was found upon him because he believed in his God. Believe the word of God. Protection is for you 100% all the days of your life in Jesus' name. Verse 24. In verse 24, and the king commanded, and they brought those men which had accused Daniel, and they cast them into the den of lions, them and their children and their wives, and the lions had the mastery of them, and break all their bulls and in pieces, and forever they came at the bottom of the den actually anyone digging any pit for you to fall into you will not fall into their pit it is those people that are digging the pit unfortunately for them that will fall into their own pit in jesus name in verse 25 verse 25 says then king darius wrote unto all the people people and nations and languages that dwell on all the earth peace be multiplied unto you verse 26 it tells us and I, I make a decree that in every dominion of my kingdom men tremble and fear before the God of Daniel somebody will talk about God as the God of mention your name now as the god of he'll be your god in jesus name and people will recognize that no god can deliver like your god for he is the living god and steadfast forever and his kingdom that which shall not be destroyed and his dominion shall be even unto the end in verse 27 it says he delivereth he delivered he's delivering now he'll keep on delivering he does it every time our god is still delivering today and if you're in any problem if you're in any predicament that deliverance will come to you even tonight in jesus name he delivereth and rescueth and he walketh signs and wonders in heaven and in earth who has delivered daniel from the power of the lions well that's old testament to see deliver even in the new testament in acts of the apostles chapter 12 acts chapter 12 we're reading from verse 5 peter therefore was kept in prison but prayer was made without ceasing of the church unto god for him 
every prayer this church is praying for you will be answered in Jesus name in verse 6 it says in verse 6 and when Herod would have brought him forth at the same night Peter was sleeping between two soldiers bound with two chains and the keepers before the door kept the prison then in verse 7 in verse 7 he tells us and behold somebody tells me what follows there the angel of the Lord came upon him they will not be late they'll get to you at the right time in Jesus name Herod will be disappointed over you expectation of the Jews will be disappointed over you the angel of the Lord came upon him and the light shined in the prison a light will shine in your prison and he smote Peter on the side and raised him up saying arise so quickly and his chains fell up from his hands no chains upon you no shackles tying you down all the courts of the enemy the angel will come and as he comes to deliver you all those chains and shackles and cords, everything they are broken in jesus name and then in verse 8 in verse 8 it says and the angel said unto him get thyself and bind on thy sandals and so he did and he said unto him cast thy garment about thee and follow me then in verse 9 we're told verse 9 says and he went out and he followed him and he wished not he knew not that it was true which was done by the angel but he thought he saw a vision your vision will come to reality verse 10 in verse 10 it says when they were past the first and the second world they came onto the iron gate that leads into the city which tell me which tell me out aloud open to them of his own accord I, well Peter is going to heaven I can just see you coming and you are going now and every door that is locked every door that is closed before you as you are getting there before you get there automatic power will roll that door and will be opened in Jesus name and they went out and passed on through one street and forth the angel departed from him look at the conclusion in verse 11 in verse 11 and when Peter was calm to himself what that means is he thought he saw a dream now he saw that it was for real he came to himself he said now I know of his surety that the Lord has sent his angel and has given me the word delivered me out of the hand of Herod and from all the expectation of the people of the Jews the angels are still ministry today and they are ministry to the heirs of salvation they are ministry to the people of God we'll see in their description We'll see the deliverance coming through them. Number three, we're looking at the dominion of the honored angels. Their dominion. We're looking at Psalm 103, verse 20. Psalm 103, verse 20. Bless the Lord, ye his angels that excel in strength that do his commandments hearkening unto the voice of his word let's come to second chronicles chapter 32 second chronicles chapter 32 reading from verse 20 uh, here we are told that uh, you know uh, Isaiah had prayed Ezekiah had prayed it says and for this cause Ezekiah the king uh, and the prophet Isaiah the son of Amos prayed and cried to heaven a foreign king had come threatening uh, he'll finish Ezekiah he'll finish the country he'll bring everything to the level he'll destroy them and they prayed when you hear the bragging and the threatening of an enemy and they're bragging and they're saying let him go and pray let him go to his church let him call his pastor let whatever happens we will destroy him 
don't panic, don't fear. The angel of the Lord will deal with the situation. Look at verse 21. In verse 21, it says, And the Lord sent an angel which caught off all the mighty men of valor cut off all the mighty men of valor and the leaders and the captives in the camp of the king of Assyria. So he returned with shame, shame of face to his own land. Your enemies will return with shame of face. They thought they'll catch you. They'll thought they'll crush you. They thought they will destroy you. But when they come, the angels of God will not allow them. And they'll go away from you with shame of face in Jesus' name. And when he was come into the house of his God, of his idol, they that came forth of his own bowels slew him there with the sword. You can tell how powerful, how mighty the angels are. Only one angel. If you read other parts, like in the second Kings, like in Isaiah, it tells us there were 185,000 men, captains, leaders, soldiers. In one night, those angels finished all of them. One angel finished all of them. How many enemies do you have? Do you have up to 1,000? I doubt. 2,000, 10,000, 100,000, whatever their number, you will be the conqueror in Jesus' name. Look at Matthew chapter 28, verse 2. Matthew chapter 28, we're reading from verse 2. And behold, there was a great earthquake. And the angel of the Lord, see that the angels are still there. They will never die. And they're still obeying the word of the Lord. At this time now, Christ, the Lord Jesus Christ, had been crucified. He had been buried. And he rolled a great stone on the tomb. And now we're told the and a, a great earthquake happened. The angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat upon it. In verse 3, it tells us in verse 3, and his countenance, one angel, his countenance was like lightning and his image white as snow. In verse 4, it says, and the fear of him and for fear of him, the keepers did shake and became as dead men. Those were the people that were watching over the large big stone that Christ will not rise up. And it says those men, mighty men and soldiers they were, they shook and they became like dead men. And then in verse 5, it says in verse 5, And the angel answered and said unto the women, Fear not ye, for I know that ye seek Jesus, which was crucified. Look at verse 6. In verse 6, it says, He is not here, for he is risen. As he said, Come, see the place where the Lord lay. You can see the strength and the power, the dominion of those angels. Look at Revelation chapter 20, reading from verse 1. The dominion of the honored angels. In Revelation chapter 20, verse 1, and I saw an angel come from heaven, having the key of the bottomless page and a great chain in his hand. Verse 2, look at verse 2. In verse 2 it says, and he laid hold on the dragon, the old serpent, which is the devil and Satan, and bound him a thousand years. Any angel, any personality that can take hold of the dragon, take hold of Satan single-handedly, take hold of the devil and bind him single-handedly and throw him into the bottomless pit, that angel has dominion. Don't you think? That angel has power and strength. And then we're told in verse 3, in verse 3 it says, And he cast him into the bottomless pit and shut him up. 
that angel must be mighty shut him up and set his seal on him that he should deceive the nations no more till the thousand years should be fulfilled after that he must be loosed a little season let's come to point number two now in point number two we're looking at the confirmation of punishment by the angels let's come to psalm 35 in psalm 35 reading from verse 5 it says let them be as chaff before the wind and let the angel of the lord chase them the enemies of those who fear the lord the psalmist prayed he said let them become like wind like chaff that is blown away by the wind let the angel of the lord chase them look at verse 6 in verse 6 it tells us let their way be dark and slippery and let the angel of the lord persecute them the persecutors of the men and women that fear the lord the persecutors of the people that love the lord let the angel of the lord persecute them actually as we look at the other aspect of the ministry of the angels of god number one they are the announcers of the destruction for the guilty adversaries the announcer of destruction for guilty adversaries number two they are agents of destruction for godless alliances alliances the people that assemble together against the people of god against those who fear the lord those who love the lord those who are serving the lord all those alliances the angels of god serve as agents of destruction it will scatter all the alliances against you against your family against your ministry in jesus name and then number three the avengers of the disobedience of grievous apostates the people who forsake the lord and they become apostates they blaspheme the lord the lord sends angels to be the avengers of their disobedience let's come to number one number one we're looking at the confirmation of punishment by the angels in number one we're going to have the announcer of destruction for guilty adversaries look at numbers chapter 22 numbers chapter 22 and we're reading from verse 22 in numbers chapter 22 verse 22 and god's anger was kindled because he went and the angel of the lord you see that that's the angel again the angel of the lord stood in the way for an adversary against him you see there was alliance between balaam and balak and because Balaam had agreed with Balak, wanting to destroy the children of Israel, that's why the angel of the Lord came and he stood in the way for an adversary against him. Now he was riding upon his ass, and his two servants were with him. In verse 23, verse 23 tells us, and the ass saw the angel of the Lord standing in the way and is so drawn in his hand and the ass turned aside out of the way and went into the field and Balaam smote the ass to turn her in the way in verse 24 verse 24 tells us but the angel of the Lord stood in a path in the of the vineyards a wall being on this side and a wall on that side in verse 25 verse 25 says and when the ass saw the angel of the lord she thrust 
herself unto the wall and crushed Balaam's foot against the wall and he smote her again. Verse 26, in verse 26, and the angel of the Lord went for them and stood in a narrow place where was no way to turn either to the right hand or to the left. Verse 27 then says, and when they asked, saw the angel of the Lord, she fell down under Balaam and Balaam's anger was kindled and he smote the ass with a staff. And now in verse 28, a miracle happened that, uh, you know, Balaam never thought of. And the Lord opened the mouth of the ass and she said unto Balaam, What have I done unto thee that thou hast meeting me these three times? And then in verse 29, and Balaam said unto the ass, Because thou, mocked, thou hast mocked me, I would, the, I would there were a sword in my hand, but now I would, I would kill thee. Verse, 12, verse 30, in verse 30, and the ass said unto Balaam, Am not I than ass upon which thou hast ridden ever since I was thine unto this day? Was I ever one to do so unto thee? And he said, Nay, look at verse 31. In verse 31, then the Lord opened the eyes of Balaam, and he saw the angel of the Lord. He saw the angel of the Lord standing in the way, and he saw drawn in his hand, and he bowed down his head and fell flat on his face. That's how your destroyers will fall down on their faces. And then in verse 32, the angel of the Lord said unto him, Wherefore, as thou smitten thine ass these three times, behold, I went out to withstand thee, because thy way is perverse before me. The people who persecute children of God have perverse ways. Perverse hearts, perverse mind, perverted mind, perverted understanding, and their way is perverse, their action is perverted before the Lord. And the Lord sends his angel against them for the punishment of those evil doers, the guilty adversaries. And then in verse 33, it tells us, and they are so me and turned from me these three times unless she had turned from me surely now also i had slain thee i would have slain you and saved her alive let's look at judges judges chapter 2 remember we're talking about the angels as the announcers of the destruction of the guilty adversaries, they announce, the angels come to announce the punishment is coming, the angels come to announce that devastation, destruction is coming for the people that become guilty adversaries of the Lord, guilty adversaries of the people of God. We're looking at Judges chapter 2 verse 1 and an angel of the Lord understand that all the time and remember we're coming from Psalm 34 the angel of the Lord encampeth round about them that fear the Lord and he delivereth them now we see the functions of those angels angel of the Lord it says an angel of the Lord came up from Gilgal unto Bochim and said I made you go up out of Egypt and have brought you unto the land which I swear unto your fathers. And I said, I will never break my covenant with you. Then in verse 2, it tells us, And ye shall make no league, no agreement, no fellowship, and then you'll not make any kind of covenant with the inhabitants of this land. Ye shall throw down their altars, but 
ye have not obeyed my voice why have ye done this and then we're told in verse 3 wherefore i also said i will not drive them out from before you but they shall be as thorns in your sides and their gods shall be a snare unto you the angel of the lord announced the punishment that was to come upon the children of israel when they broke the covenant of the lord in second kings chapter one second kings chapter two, second kings chapter one reading from verse two second kings chapter one verse two and ahaziah fell down through a lattice in his upper chamber that was in samaria and was sick and he sent messengers and said to them go inquire of beelzebub the god of ekron whether i shall recover of this disease that's a king in israel a king at the capital samaria and he fell down and became sick and instead of sending for the prophets of god for the people of god to pray for him so he could be healed he said to the god of ekron and he wanted to know will i be healed will i be delivered out of this and they were told in verse 3 look at verse 3 verse 3 tells us but the angel of the lord see that the angel of the lord said to elijah the tishbite arise go up to meet the messengers of the king of samaria and say unto them is it because there is not not a god in israel that ye go to inquire of beelzebub the god of ekron you see when people backslide and when people take their trust and their faith and their confidence away from the lord they're having a challenge they forget the christ who died for us on the cross of calvary they forget the stripes of christ by which were healed and they forget all the promises of god and then they go to the occult and they go to you know people that are using magic and they go to people that are worshiping idols and they want to know whether they're going to get healed or not they're looking for vision they're looking for revelation in the power with the powers of darkness they forsake the lord and instead of the angel of the lord delivering them the angel will announce their destruction the angels will announce that because they are backsliding and they become the guilty adversaries of the lord that they will die satan will not heal them and uh, the false prophets will not heal them and all those uh, gods of Ekron will not be able to heal them but the angel of the Lord instead of being on their side will be the announcer of their death and of their destruction look at it, verse 3 and but the angel of the Lord said to Elijah the Tishbite arise go up to meet the messengers of the king of Samaria and say unto them is it not because there is not a god in israel that you go to inquire of beelzebub the god of ekron look at verse 4 in verse 4 it says now therefore thus says the lord thou shalt not come down from that bed of which thou art gone up but shall surely die and elijah departed we're coming to the second thing here not only that they are now they are also the agents of destruction for godly godless alliances let's come back to psalm 35 and we're reading from verse 5 psalm 35 verse 5 let them be as chaff before the wind all those alliances all those uh, conspirators that want to destroy the ones who love the lord who fear the lord they'll become like chaff before the wind but let the angel of the lord chase them i pray you'll not be an enemy 
you're a friend of God, you're a child of God, you're a follower of the Lord Jesus Christ, and the angels will become agents of blessing in your life in Jesus' name. But the people that want to destroy uh, the children of God, the servants of God, the, uh, the sons of God, the daughters of God, and they have conspiracy together, they have alliances together, the Lord will break and the Lord will scatter all those alliances in Jesus' name. And the angel of the Lord will chase them. They'll chase, the angel will chase them from you. Chase them from your community. Chase them from your compound. And chase them from your family in Jesus' name. Then in verse 6, in verse 6 it says, Let their way be dark and slippery, and let the angel of the Lord persecute them. Let the angel of the Lord persecute them. And I want you to understand that all those who may persecute you, they don't have too much strength. In fact, even without an angel, you, the word of God and the promise of God in your mouth, you speak the word, it will be affirmed in Jesus' name. And now the angel of the Lord coming against your persecutor. And those angels have been operating for thousands of years. They were created before the time of Adam and through the time of Adam and through the time of Noah and through the time of the flood and all through the time of the Old Testament and the New Testament. And if they want to persecute any offender, those uh, angels they have all all the method and they have all the wherewithal to persecute the persecutors of the believers the angel of the Lord will persecute them they'll not have any way to run they will leave you alone in Jesus name look at Psalm 68 in Psalm 68 we're reading from verse 17 Psalm 68 verse 17 the chariots of God at 20,000, even thousands of angels. The chariot of God, there are 20,000, even thousands of angels. I want to remind you of that day, that morning, uh, that Elisha woke up and the king of Syria had said, go look at where he is in Dothana and bring him here. I will deal with him. Is the one revealing my secrets unto the king uh, of Israel and then they woke up early morning and the servant of Elisha said my master alas what are we going to do all these armies they are here and they want to catch you and they might catch me with you and Elisha relaxed you were relaxed there's no danger for you there's no destruction for you all those chariots of uh, Assyrian king, they are nothing. They will not touch you in Jesus' name. And then Elisha prayed and said, Lord, open his eyes that he may see. And then when his eyes were open, that servant saw the chariots of God all around. The same chariot that came to take Elijah away to heaven. All those chariots, they came back around Elisha. They were ready, ready bodyguard from heaven that will protect him, that will protect you. And those chariots of God, they are, they are thousands, even thousands of angels. The Lord is among them as in Sinai, in the holy place. Look at verse 21. In verse 21, but God shall wound the head of his enemies. I wanted a headquarters, amen. God shall wound the head of his enemies and the airy scalp of such and one as boys on steel in his trespasses. Look at verse 30. In verse 30, rebuke the company of spearmen, the multitude of the bulls with the calf of the people till everyone submit himself with pieces of silver. Tell me your last line there in your Bible. 
do it in unison. One, two, three, go. Scattered thou the people that delight in war. War against your life, the Lord will scatter those warriors. The war against your family, the Lord will scatter those warriors. The war against the church, the Lord will scatter all those warriors. He will send his angels and he will scatter the people that delight, that rejoice in war. Let's look at number three there. Number three there, the avengers of the disobedience of, of a grievous apostates, grievous apostates. It tells us in Genesis chapter 19. Genesis chapter 19, we're reading from verse 1. In Genesis chapter 19, verse 1, it says, And there came two angels to Sodom at evening, and Lord sat in the gate of Sodom, and Lord seeing them rose up to meet them, and he bowed himself with his face toward the ground. Underline that in verse 1, there came two angels to Sodom. What have they come to do? They are the avengers of the disobedience of grievous apostates. Those who have gone so far, they are irredeemable. Those who have gone so far, they will not repent. Those who have gone so far that even in the presence of the angels, they perpetrate their evil, they perpetrate their violence, they perpetrate their transgression, they perpetrate their iniquity. Those angels came as avengers of those disobedient people. Look at verse 11. In verse 11, and dismote the men that were at the door of the house with blindness. Well, you know the story. All the men of the city came. They said, Lord, bring out those men. Want to know them. They wanted to rough handle them. They wanted to mess them up. They didn't know they were angels. They thought they were men. They wanted to commit sodomy with them. And so they even wanted to break the door. When a Lord said, don't do like this, don't act like this. As they came, those two angels that were, when they were at the door, they smote them with blindness, both small and great, so that they weary themselves to find the door. Even after they became blind, they were still intent. They wanted to do the evil uh, they determined to do. Then in verse 12, uh, in verse 12, and the men said unto Lord, as thou hear any besides son-in-law, thy sons and thy daughters, and whatsoever thou hast in the city, bring them out of this place verse 13 it says for we will destroy this place angels said we will destroy this place they are the avengers of the disobedience of grievous apostates because the cry of them is waxing great before the face of the lord and the lord has sent us to destroy it. We're told in Isaiah chapter 37. Isaiah chapter 37. We're reading from verse 35 and verse 36. Isaiah chapter 37. We're reading from verse 35. For I will defend the city to save each for my own sake, the Lord will defend his church the lord will defend his people the lord will defend this church that christ said upon this rock i build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it in jesus name and the Lord has given the promise like he gave the promise to Ezekiah for I will defend this city to save it for my own sake and for my servant David's sake in verse 36 then we're told then the angel of the Lord went forth and smote the camp 
of the Assyrians a hundred and four score and five thousand and when they arose early in the morning behold somebody there tell me they were all dead corpses let's come to the new testament acts chapter 12 we're reading from verse 21 remember the first part of acts chapter 12 was when Herod laid hands on James and killed James. That was because that was his time. Otherwise, Herod could have done nothing. And now he went forth to lay hands on Peter. And because he thought, I'm going to please the Jews by the death of those apostles. We have read the story already as we read about the deliverance that the angel of the Lord brought unto Peter. He said, now I know that the Lord has sent his angel and has delivered him from the hand of Herod and from the expectation of the Jews. Is that Herod we're reading about now in Acts chapter 12, verse 21, and upon a such day, Herod, a rage in royal apparel sat upon his throne and he made an oration unto them. Then in verse 22, we're told, and the people gave a shout, saying, It is the voice of a God and not of a man. Verse 23 then tells us, and immediately, tell me who came now? Somebody say it aloud. Immediately the angel of the Lord smote him because he gave not God the glory and he was eating of worms and gave up the ghost. Look at verse 24. This is what Herod thought he'll destroy. He'll destroy the word of God. He'll destroy the witnesses of Christ. He'll destroy the ministers. He'll destroy the apostles. He'll scatter the church. He'll get rid of the church. He died, but the church is still alive. They will die, the church will remain alive. But the word of God grew and multiplied. The word of God grew and multiplied through your mouth, through your ministry, through your local church, through your district church, through our group of churches, and through the church at the headquarters, and through the church in every region and every state, and through the church deep alive in uh, the whole of Africa and beyond, this word will continue to grow and multiply. We'll come to point number three now. Point number three, the commission and protection by the angels. The commission and protection by the angels. We're coming to Psalm 91 and we're reading from verse 11. Psalm 91, reading from verse 11. For he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. Personal, he shall give his angels charge over me and to keep me in all my ways. Say it as if you really believed it. He shall keep his angels over you to keep you in all your ways. You're going to walk, he'll keep you. They say some people are there and there's trouble there. Anyone that passes through that place never comes back again, you'll come back. I'll see you next time if Jesus tires. Anywhere you go, everywhere you go, the Lord will watch over you. His angels will watch over you. Going out, coming in, sleeping at night, being in the office, they put something on that chair, they put something in that place. All those things are neutralized in Jesus' name. 
and then we're told in Hebrews chapter 1 Hebrews chapter 1 we're reading from verse 13 Hebrews chapter 1 verse 13 but to which of the angels said he at any time sit on my right hand until I make thine enemies thy footstool in verse 14 it says are they not all ministry spirits those angels are they not all one and all ministry spirits sent forth to minister to them who shall be heirs of salvation those who, are, those who are saved, those who are born again, those who have inherited the grace of God that brings salvation, those angels, until this day, they are sent forth to minister for them who are the heirs of salvation. You are saved, those angels will keep on ministering to you. You are in the service of God, those angels will keep on ministering to you. That's why you have no fear, you are not panicking, you have no concern as to, you know, will I remain alive, will this happen, will that happen? The Lord will keep you alive all your ways in Jesus' name. Let's look at three things here before we pray. Number one, the ministry of angels to our Savior. Have you looked at the ministry of the Lord Jesus Christ? In fact, from the announcement of the conception of the Lord Jesus, an angel came, Gabriel by name, and spoke to Mary. And then when Joseph was wondering, what kind of thing is this? An angel told him, that which you see in Mary is by the Holy Ghost. And then when Herod want to kill all the children so as to kill the Lord Jesus as a baby, an angel came to Joseph and said, take the child out of this place. And then when that Herod had died, an angel also said, you can take him back now. And then he started his ministry at the time of the temptation. After the temptations, the angels came and the ministered unto him and then there was a time he spoke and they said an angel spoke to him all through his ministry until the end when Peter drew up the sword and he cut up the ear of that servant of the high priest then Jesus said what are you doing that don't you think don't you know if I wanted to I could call legions of angels and they will come and eventually when he died and he rose again it was the angel that took away the stone and eventually after he rose from the dead he appeared to his own disciples while he was talking to them he was taken to heaven and while they were looking angels came and said ye men of Galilee why are you standing here gazing up into heaven i'm showing you that all through the ministry of jesus from conception to crucifixion and to the time was taken away angels kept on ministering unto him let's look at a few verses in john chapter 1 verse 51 john chapter 1 verse 51 the ministry of angels to our savior it says it says unto him verily verily i say unto you hereafter ye shall see heaven open and the angels of god ascending and descending upon the son of man he was very conscious of the presence of those angels that's why he was at liberty everywhere he could walk here and go there because he knew the angels will do their work and they will not dash his foot against a stone. We're told in Hebrews chapter 1, reading from verse 6. Hebrews chapter 1, reading from verse 6. And again, when he bringeth in the first begotten into the world, he says, and let all the angels of God worship him.
That's talking about Christ. Christ came into this world and then the Father commanded, let all the angels of God worship him in verse 7. In verse 7 we're told, and of the angels it says, who maketh his angel spirits and his ministers a flame of fire. Matthew chapter 4 verse 11. In Matthew chapter 4 verse 11, here is after the temptation, then the devil leaveth him, and behold, angels came and ministered unto him. In chapter 26 of Matthew, Matthew 26 verse 53, it tells us here what Jesus Christ said unto Peter. He said, thinkest thou not, thinkest thou that I cannot now pray to my father and he shall presently at this very time give me more than 12 legions of angels you remember when he was praying in the garden of gethsemane we're told in luke chapter 22 luke chapter 22 reading from verse 41 it says and he was withdrawn from them about a stone's cast and kneeled down and prayed and they were told in verse 42 in verse 42 saying our father if thou be willing remove this cup from me nevertheless not my will but thine be done and now verse 43 tells us and there appeared an angel unto him from heaven strengthening him to prepare him to face calvary and to face the cross and to face the crucifixion there appeared an angel that strengthened him of course you also know that at the time of his uh, resurrection an angel came rolled away the stone the angels were always at hand in the ministry of Christ. Let's look at number two now. In number two, we have the mission of angels towards his servants. The mission of angels towards his servants. Acts chapter 5, we're reading from verse 18. In Acts chapter 5, verse 18, and they laid hands on the apostles, the members of the Sanhedrin, those Jewish religious leaders, they didn't like, they didn't appreciate the preaching of resurrection, and how many people were turning to the Lord and getting saved, and so they laid hands on the apostles, will deal with them, will incarcerate them, will, will hinder them, will, will shut them up, and will remove the gospel from their mouth, and will remove their ministry from the land they cannot do it for you they cannot do it for us they cannot do it they laid hands on the apostles and they put them in the common prison look at verse 19 in verse 19 but somebody there tell me verse 19 somebody there shout it out the angel of the Lord by night opened the prison doors and he brought them forth and said in verse 20, he said, go stand and speak in the temple to the people all the words of this life. And then in verse 21, and when they had that, they entered into the temple early in the morning and taught. They entered early into the temple in the morning and taught. But the high priest came, and the day that were with him, and they called the council together, and all the senate of the children of Israel, and they said to the prison to have them brought the saints there to the prison bring them here let's let's question them let's threaten them did they find them in the prison they will not find you you will not be there you will be serving the lord your god in strength and power in authority in breakthrough in jesus name Acts chapter 8, we're reading from verse 26. Uh, Acts chapter 8, verse 26. And the angel of the Lord spake unto Philip. Look at that. Philip was in Samaria. There was a great revival there, but there was a lone person, one person, isolated person. 
in the desert, in that island. And, and Philip could not know that, but the angel knew that, and the angel will make connection between the evangelist and the lone person there. And so the angel of the Lord spake unto Philip, saying, Arise, go toward the south, unto the way that goeth down from Jerusalem unto Giza, which is desert. And when he got there, the spirit directed him. He saw the eunuch of Ethiopia and he led him to the Lord. The angels also direct in the preaching of the gospel. We have read chapter 12, reading from verse 5. The angel of God came to that prison and he brought a Peter out. If you happen to go any anytime like that into any kind of prison, the angel of the Lord will not not allow you to be languishing there and to die there you will come out in Jesus name Amen. chapter 27 of Acts Acts chapter 27 we're reading from verse 22 here is Paul the apostle they have been on the sea and there was a trouble on the sea but look at this and now I exhort you to be of good cheer for there shall be be no loss of any man's life among you but of the sheep are you here your amen on that the Lord is promising all of us who are here tonight all of us who are hearing the word tonight together the Lord is saying there shall be no loss of any man's life among you your wife, your children, your husband, your family. There shall be no loss of any man's life in Jesus' name. Amen. And look at verse 23. In verse 23, for there stood by me this night the angel of God. You remember there was storm. And the people did not know what to do. They were actually casting all their property out of the ship into the sea. They were fearful. They thought they were going to die. But one Paul was there. And because of that one single person, Paul, the Lord sent an angel. When everybody around you, when they are in danger, and you single person, what's your name? Let me mention your name. I said, what's your name? And the Lord, because of you, he will preserve all those people there. How special Paul was, how special you are. They stood by me this night, the angel of God, whose I am and whom I serve. And then in verse 24, it says, saying, fear not, Paul. Put your name there. Fear not, Fear not, you will not fear in Jesus' name. But thou must be brought before Caesar, and lo, God has given thee all them that sail with thee. God has given thee all them that sail with thee. Those people could not pray. They were panicking. Those people could not manifest faith. They were fearful. Those people thought the end had come. They didn't have any future. They didn't know how to call upon their God. They didn't remember any verse of scripture. But because Paul was there, all those who couldn't pray, all those who couldn't manifest faith, God said, because of this single man, my servants, my servant Paul, all of them that couldn't pray, that couldn't manifest faith, I will preserve their lives. Because of a single faithful apostle, because of a single faithful minister, because of a single faithful child of God there, all the people around you, they might be panicking, they might be fearful, they might be crying because of you, because you are in Christ and Christ is in you and Christ has your destiny in mind and is going to preserve you. All the people that surround you, the Lord will preserve them. While I talk about you, I must talk about myself. That 
because I have given my life to the Lord and he has promised me that I will finish my course with joy whatever trouble comes whatever danger comes the Lord will preserve me yeah. and then all of you even though you say I'm not fasting enough I'm not praying enough I don't have this I don't have because you are with me I am with you the Lord will preserve all of you in Jesus name danger will not knock at your door calamity will not knock at your door evil will not overtake you fear not Paul that must be brought before Caesar and look God has given thee all them that sail with thee look at verse 25 it says wherefore sirs be of good cheer for I believe God I believe God that it shall be even as it was told me it shall be even as it was told me he was preserved and all the people with him were preserved i am preserved and all the people with me they are preserved in jesus name we're looking at number three now number three is the ministration of angels to the saints the ministration of angels to the saints do you know anytime anyone repents there is joy in the presence of the angels of God because of that one single person that has repented and so the angels take note that one has come into the kingdom you find that in Luke chapter 15 verse 10 and then you remember Cornelius he was praying to God he didn't have all the revelation he ought to have and an angel came and said sent to Joppa and then Peter will come he will tell you what you ought to hear the Lord knows when your heart is panting after him the Lord knows when you're eager I want to know God more I want to know God more an angel will appear and it will send the person it will send the preacher it will send the pastor it will send the one that will reveal the totality of the mind of God to you in Jesus name and then we're told we come in the presence of God and that presence of God millions of angels are there and you will not miss your blessing in Jesus name look at Hebrews chapter 12 Hebrews chapter 12 we're looking at verse 22 Hebrews chapter 12 we're reading from verse 22 but ye are come unto Mount Zion where are you now ye are come unto Mount Zion it says and unto the city of the living God the heavenly Jerusalem to an innumerable company of angels to an innumerable company of angels the angels are more in number than all our number here and so you need a defense you need a protection you need deliverance you need provision you need whatever an angel has been assigned unto everyone you will not see them because God doesn't want you to worship them the Lord doesn't want you to concentrate on them just go on in your ministry and go on in obedience to the Lord and anytime there's any stumbling block the angel will remove that stumbling block before you get there anytime there's danger the angel will remove the danger before you get there that's why from now on your path will be smooth that's why your future will be bright that's why everything that will cut short your life cut short your ministry anything that will destabilize you and disorganize you and then you'll say I'm confused no confusion no depression no attack no affliction we have come into the midst of the innumerable company of angels and then in verse 23 in verse 23 to the general assembly and the church of the firstborn which are reaching in heaven and to God the judge of all and to the spirits of just men made perfect verse 24 it says we have come to Jesus I have come to Jesus 
the mediator of the new covenant and to the blood of sprinkling that speaketh better things than the blood of Abel. Because of that, in verse 25, it says, Now see that she refuse not him that speaketh, for if the escape not, who refused him that spake on earth, much more shall we not escape if we turn away. We well, will not turn away. I will not turn away. Much more shall we not escape if we turn away from him that speaketh from heaven. We're not of the people that turn away, we're of the people that are making progress in the Lord. And your progress in the Lord from now on will be remarkable in Jesus' name. Protection in your life, preservation in your life, progress in your life. All the things you are afraid of, maybe that will happen, that will happen. They are cleared away in Jesus' name. And the angels of God will always be around. You will not see them. Don't concentrate on them. They will always be around ministering to the heirs of salvation. Let's rise up now and talk to the Lord in prayer. And thank him for what we have heard today. How he has revealed to us all this revelation concerning the angels of God. That are there to protect, there to, de to destroy the works of the devil. And there to destroy deliver all the men and the women of God all the servants of God is there to make sure that no evil happens to you, happens to you and you will complete your ministry with joy in Jesus name